My name is Shadrek Chimane. I'm 19 years old and I am from Mozambique. My name is Daniel Abbas. I'm 12 years old and I'm from Mozambique. My name is Rebecca Dianji. I'm 19 years old and I come from Tanzania. My name is Rudin Dina Paluku and I'm 18 years old. I'm from the Democratic Republic of Congo. My name is Trem Kabela. I'm from South Africa and I'm 14 years old. Well, I've been the organizing secretary for the Leadership Development Forum here at Waterford Pantago. Uh, I've been house captain. I'm a founder of an organization in Tanzania called Young Coders, uh, whereby this organization is a pioneer in introducing programming to primary school kids. And uh, I've been the captain of various sports, uh, sports activities as well, like soccer, basketball, volleyball, floorball. I am currently the, the school's rugby club captain. So we have a group of 15 um, peop, uh, kids who are less than 15 years of age learning how to make websites and various um, computer apps. Uh, we placed uh, responsible for a third of the school, you know, for various sports activities. Spraying ideas or, or themes that they want to talk about to other students. My co-founder of 30 Seconds of Change which is an organization which tries to address various issues in the community by targeting youth. And I've also been uh, greatly involved in the Leadership Development Forum, which is basically a forum where we, we have the ability to discuss and debate uh, various uh, political problems and issues and see if we can find you know, solutions to those problems that we're currently facing. A co-head of a founded organization called 30 Seconds of Change. To become a leader, I think it takes heart, passion, and commitment. It takes a lot of sacrifice. To become a leader, I think you have to understand how things work. I think the first thing that takes someone to be a leader is courage. Well, where would we be without hard work? We always have to pitch in. It's not going to be handed to us on a silver platter. The ability to challenge yourself constantly and to not be afraid to make mistakes in, the face, in, in front of other people. It takes a lot of uh, responsibility. Uh, you have to be courageous in taking risks. You have to be courageous in leading other people. You have to be courageous in trying new solutions. I don't think that you can go in and lead a country or a group if you don't know how the things operate. And to be able also to accept your mistakes and move forward from that. Putting all your energy and all your resources in trying to develop other people. Another thing that defines a leader is someone who is open-minded, someone who believes in other people's views, someone who can connect other people's ideas with his own ideas and come up with a unique and one solution. After a certain amount of work and um, education, then I think you can lead. And uh, try to, you know, to lead them in such a way that we are able to achieve any sort of predetermined goals and in that sense you are accountable of uh, whatever consequences may arise from those decisions that you may find yourself making becoming uh, African leader is really difficult uh, from uh, when you look at the history of Africa in general and how there's a, uh, there have been a very sudden transformation from colonialism to independence and I think going through the, those hurdles is what makes an African leader really different. Right now, we African countries are a part of the global village. We communicate with other countries, we partner with other countries socially, economically, culturally. I think that consultation from different, from different countries is very important because it brings in different perspectives. And when you have a, when you're trying to find a solution to one problem, you know, one solution fits all. So when you have the more perspectives you have on a situation, on, on an issue, the more solutions you have. When you have intellectual people who know, who know the underlying principles behind these systems driving the political, um, social and economical platforms, I think it's really good, uh, they serve as good leaders as they can make good decisions compared to people, uh, most people who, are, who came through the armed um, struggle, I think most of them did, don't necessarily have the, the, the required uh, expertise in understanding the economic, uh, various economic, political and social systems. A leader who has gone through a military struggle does have the qualities to lead a country because they have gone through a struggle, they have proven themselves as an individual and they have proven themselves in the face of, of enormous challenges, for example, the liberation struggle such as in Mozambique for Eduardo Mondlane and Samora Michel. 
However, once once these these, these leaders, these young le these great leaders, have paved the way for our future generation, they've already set the foundations for the new leadership. Because we've we've gone over the liberation struggle, we've passed the wars. We no longer need to carry arms. So I believe that yes, we should be educating a new generation of young leaders. However, we must acknowledge that a leader is not just an intellectual who can speak and who can use big words who knows a lot of theories or not, but someone who has proven themselves in the face of different challenges and has proven themselves a person who can, who can put forward the people's views and make changes for the better of everyone. As you can see, most of the people who, come, who become leaders after a military coup don't necessarily have uh, the, necessary, the necessary skills needed to understand the political, social and economical platforms and systems that are driving various countries in the world. The use of uh, a military background to sort of lead people has, uh, I mean, has proved to be uh, a failure for the most part uh, of the past generations, at least for Africa, in terms of the fact that uh, the only thing it has managed to achieve there's been a numerous number of, you know, bloodshed and an increase in the number of, you know, refugees spread all over the world. I've worked with refugees in Swaziland. The interaction with them has sort of opened me up to the, to the fact that, you know, leadership is not only about, you know, the type of goals you sort of want to achieve. It's about, you know, creating a better future for everyone. Education gives us uh, intellectual freedom in the sense that we are given both the freedom and the, and the liberty to explore uh, uh, as many ideas as we can and to implement them. Therefore, for Africa, I feel uh, the investment in education is the best investment we can have. Uh, when I grow up, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to help solve the unemployment problem that my country is facing and Africa in general. But also, I want to be a pioneer in providing various solutions in my community and in Africa at large. Being called a leader of the future makes me feel somewhat set aside and being being an afterthought for what will come and not what is press what is a pressing issue now. Therefore, I think that being a leader of the future is just a scapegoat for the current leaders to put us put the youth aside, put the current issues aside and think about and leave them for the future generation to worry about, leave all the problems for the future youth to worry about. Being called a young leader of tomorrow is a way um, misplaced for this generation because I feel we should be the, youth, the leadership of today. You can only make a difference today and the difference you make today will have its effect tomorrow. Being a leader of tomorrow is not what I want. I think being a leader of today is, it's more involving in a way and I find that since adults can do things in their own way, kids should also be able to do their part in helping the country or the community. My name is Daniel Abbas and I am an African leader. My name is Jem Kavala and I am an African leader. <laughs> Yeah, but I figure